Thanks, Gina. Awesome. And now for something completely different. Um, so hello, everybody. Um, my presentation today is based on my doctoral research project, which was a qualitative research project investigating Muay Thai's role in promoting self-determination among diasporic women in Canada. Um, so to do this research, I essentially organized a self-defense collective teaching Muay Thai to women who were newcomers to Canada. Uh, so in contrast to Alex's paper, which we just heard, I'm looking at a recreational and non-competitive women's learning context. And that just shows you, again, how diverse um, these, this aspect of the intersection between gender and martial stu art studies really can be. Um, and we also hope this will be a nice segue into George's work, which we'll hear about next on trauma-informed kickboxing. So in my paper today, I'm going to be beginning first with a brief background on some literature on Muay Thai and women's embodied learning, specifically in Muay Thai. I'll introduce my research question, give an overview of my research project, um, go through some key findings. Um, I split those into both um, participants' motivation for joining the study, as well as their individual and collective learning experiences. And I'll be concluding with some implications on self-determination in martial arts pedagogy and practice. So very briefly, um, just to make sure we're all on the same page, because I know we all come from different backgrounds and we study different styles in martial arts, so I want to give a brief um, overview of what Muay Thai is when I say Muay Thai. So Muay Thai is a martial art or national sport from Thailand. It's an intense, energetic, stand-up striking, sometimes called hard style of martial art. Um, translated, it means the art of eight limbs um, in Thai, but in Western context, it's sometimes referred to as Thai kickboxing um, or just Thai boxing. And in terms of the eight limbs, the eight limbs refers to hands, elbows, knees, and feet, which are the eight points of contact and the various movements patterns you'll see in Muay Thai. So, what did I find in the literature on women's embodied learning in martial arts in Muay Thai? Uh, so like other martial arts, there's um, been research done exploring um, claiming of agency and finding that there's a strategies for challenging, destabilizing, reworking gender norms and stereotypes. Um, improve strength and power and overcoming what's an assumed um, imposed sense of weakness. In terms of the community building aspect, um, there's been development of greater respect and respect between training partners as well. And despite some of the benefits, there are also admittedly gender inequities and persistent issues and challenges impacting women's participation in Muay Thai. These include exclusionary tactics and sexist and hypermasculine discourses, and hard martial arts, like Muay Thai, um, can be considered masculine and militaristic, which may be um, a less inviting learning context for some learners. In a recent literature review on gender and dynamics in martial arts, Lindsay et al. found and identified some key issues, um, such as traditional hierarchies, gender norms, and problems associated with mixed gender contact. So for my research project, I wanted to explore and evaluate new pedagogical approaches for teaching and learning Muay Thai. So one of the research questions that I explore in my dissertation um, is this, and it will guide the focus of my discussion today. So how did women in this project understand and what did they achieve through the embodied learning of Muay Thai, both on individual and collective levels? So I'll briefly give you a snapshot of my research projects with the methodology. I'm happy to answer more questions um, in the discussion or even um, in the reception that follows. There's a lot to fit a whole dissertation into a 20-minute presentation. Um, but essentially, in my approach, I took a feminist and decolonial approach um, to this work. And I organized um, a uh, work, embodied learning workshop, uh, community, community workshop is what I'm calling it. Um, this consisted of 12 sessions. And I delivered 12 sessions per week over the course of six weeks. I invited women in my community who were new um, to the community to join this project. Um, they were novice learners, and so some of them had a, a little bit of experience in martial arts, but very minimal uh, experience in martial arts. They were very much novice learners. Um, I was able to find nine participants to engage in this project, and they had been in Canada between 10 months and three years. So. Um, in terms of data collection, I had three sources of data. So I conducted interviews of each participant, individual one-on-one -on -one semi-structured interviews with participants. Uh, one interview occurred before the project and the other after the project. And this was to determine the impact of the embodied learning for each participant. Um, I also did my version of embodied ethnography as the principal investigator. So that, looks, that means um, my participation in the project being both the facilitator as well as a member of the collective. Um, so gathering data in that sense in terms of what it felt like to be in that space and just really my, my participation as well as witnessing um, the dynamics that was going on in that context. And lastly, as part of the project, um, there was some participant journaling involved. And so I had my participants' journals to um, use as my third source of data. 
And I've been analyzing my data using a reflexive thematic analysis, so looking for codes and themes in order to figure out what happens and what, was, what the learning um, involves. So here's the pedagogical model that I developed um, and delivered. So each session followed this basic structure. Sessions were approximately two hours in length. And this model um, is based on a combination of um, self-defense collective organizing, feminist self-defense collective organizing, working from a transnational and diasporic feminist perspective, um, as well as bringing in um, some respectful engagement with indigenous um, methods for engaging and building community. Um, so each session started with an opening, a land acknowledgement um, to reflect on the land that we were gathered on and learning in. Um, we did them did what's called an opening circle check-in. So checking in with each other, sharing um, how we were feeling at that moment and that day, um, and sharing any updates we wanted to share. And then that led into the Muay Thai practice itself, um, which is about 45 minutes to an hour. It took us to the halfway point in the session. Following that um, movement practice of the Muay Thai, we then engaged in some reflective discussion, group discussion, um, as well as some individual journaling activities. And each session would um, conclude with a closing checkout, again, checking in to see how we were feeling in that moment and going around our circle. Um, so I should mention that throughout this process, um, self-determination was always um, a big part of my pedagogy, and so participants always understood um, that they could pass on any activity if it didn't feel right for them that day in their body, um, or look for um, some alternative um, to make it for their learning. So I'll be sharing three aspects of my findings. Um, the first, um, talking about motivation for participation, because I think it's really important in terms of self-determination to understand uh, where our participants are coming from, what brought these participants to the project. So again, as I mentioned, these were novice women learners um, who were really interested in participating in um, martial arts and Muay Thai from a recreational perspective. Um, so first and foremost, they were interested in the Muay Thai. Everyone was interested in learning about Muay Thai, not just learning the practice, but also learning the culture, the history, the background, what exactly is Muay Thai. Um, they wanted to learn proper technique and how to do things properly. That was important to them. Um, typical things like improved health and fitness and weight loss, as you might see in the Western fitness context, were also um, emphasized. Um, an interest in stress release was also a common uh, reason that people were looking to find in this project. Um, and also looking for motivations, and they get them motivated to get moving, and just a general sense of overall motivation for, for life after that. Building confidence was also um, a common theme that came out, as well as an opportunity to challenge themselves, to get out of their comfort zone, as they talked about. Self-defense was another reason, so again, a lot of these women had come by themselves um, to Canada from different places in the world, and so being alone in a new country and context, they had some concerns about um, personal safety, and so self-defense was um, an interesting uh, reason for them to join. And lastly, there is the interest in making new friends and building relationships um, with other people who, and sharing experiences of other people who were new to the community. So, my first set of findings, um, looking at sort of the individual level of learning and what individuals, individuals got and found important from the embodied learning in Muay Thai. So, just quickly, self-determination for my participants, um, what they thought this meant was um, in terms of goals. So, having a goal, knowing oneself, and then having the motivation to go after those goals. So that's how they um, define self-determination in their own words. Um, and one of the most common responses that I got from participants in that, those post-interviews was um, confidence, improved confidence. Um, so that meant um, confidence in how to perform Muay Thai, how to do the movements and feel confident in their bodies, but also from that mental, emotional state and just feeling confident um, in themselves. And so this confidence came from the realization that they could do something, that they could do this activity, um, and that's something that a, not a lot of women they thought could also do as well, so having that embodied experience. Now, as newcomers, confidence is really important um, because, as one of my participants mentioned, it's one of the first things to go when you transition into a new context. And so having to learn things new in a new country, setting yourself up, um, can impact your confidence level. Stress and anxiety release was also um, something else, a common um, response and an embodied result of the training. And again, newcomers often in setting themselves up in a new um, country or context and deal with a lot of um, challenges, and so this can create stress and anxiety from, from setting themselves up. So this was another benefit that they experienced from the embodied learning. 
And so from my own embodied experience of being in that space, I always found it was really amazing because there was a shift that you could feel in the space and that embodied learning, that practice of the Muay Thai from when people came in for that initial check-in, maybe they were stressed out about work or personal issues in their life, going through the Muay Thai and practicing that together, that embodied learning, there was a definite shift um, in the tension dropping out of the space, which is really cool um, to experience. And then coming back together as that group for that reflection and discussion, um, just everyone was a lot more open and eager to engage with each other. Speaking up and being heard was another interesting finding. Um, so participants talked about finding their voice and being able to connect with others um, and not feeling as shy to really express themselves and express their opinions. Um, and so speaking up for yourself in terms of self-determination is important because it, it helps you express, again, your motivations, your goals, and speaking up for yourself. And feeling like you are being heard and respected is very affirming. Another embodied result um, of practicing Muay Thai, again, because my participants were new to the practice, was muscle soreness. Everyone experienced how sore they were after training. Um, but I found it was really interesting in how they talked about this. Um, and it was seen as a positive thing because it was a sign of progress for them, that they were getting stronger, they were making some progress in their learning, and something was happening through this project. And so lastly, um, one of the findings that individuals shared um, was a surprise that they actually could learn Muay Thai, which I found actually rather surprising. Um, because in my initial interviews of participants, everyone was really excited um, to learn Muay Thai. They talked about how they couldn't wait to get started. And then they told me afterwards that um, at the start, they had been wondering, they weren't actually sure if they could actually do it. And they'd actually stick out the project to the end. Um, and so in the fall, as participants said about how um, they were surprised that they were able to learn it, and that itself again, contributed to the confidence that they built um, throughout the project. So just a couple of quotations um, from interviews just to follow up and reaffirm those points that I've mentioned. Again, talking about um, the importance of having a safe space to feel confident, as participant one says here. Uh, she talks a lot about how she built that confidence and, again, the importance of having confidence as an immigrant and newcomer. Participant two, again, talks about gaining confidence through the, pro through the project in terms of physical strength um, in the practice of Muay Thai, but, again, how that transferred outside of the learning space. Participant three talks about um, stress release and how, at the end of a session, she felt more relaxed, and, again, there was that sense of release and relief. And then person five makes the point about how um, was surprised that she actually could keep with the project, learn the Muay Thai, um, and how that really made her enjoy the learning experience more when she was able to figure out um, and be able to um, do the practice and keep up. So moving on to the collective um, level. So I'll discuss some findings on the collective level and how that contributed to community building. Um, so one of the important um, findings was participants said that having a shared goal to learn Muay Thai and having that common purpose and interest really brought us together. They felt that created a bond as a group. Um, so it was, and it was really inspiring for them because it's coming in from different cultural backgrounds um, and different nationalities. They weren't really sure how the group dynamic would evolve. But having that focus and that common purpose to learn Muay Thai really helped build um, the intercultural um, connections and community and help participants connect and learning across borders. Pad work was the most popular activity um, that participants engaged in. Um, almost everybody said that, that was their favorite thing and the highlight of the experience. Um, and they said that was due to the greater energy expenditure, uh, feeling, again, that sense of release and energy, um, but also feeling connected to other people. Because when you're hitting pads with somebody, you're having that embodied connection with somebody else um, and really brought folks together. Um, seeing group, um, part group members participate and collective progress was really motivating for participants. They talked about how um, they were really inspired by seeing each other um, from session to session, improve, get more confident in the movements. Um, however, I was interested that some participants, meant, when comparing themselves to other participants, um, that was actually demotivating for participants. So looking at the collective and the collective progress was actually more motivating um, for them. And so lastly, um, I was also surprised by one of my participants' responses in how um, the heightened emotional engagement and the vulnerability that um, the practice um, created, um, initiated, um, actually she felt brought us together more as a group. So this is really related to that community building aspect. And she said that because Muay Thai takes us to these heightened emotional states, putting you in a vulnerable position, it really requires building trust, building trust and building a stronger relationship with each other. So again, just a couple of um, quotes to support these. Um, so again, participant four talks about this idea of coming from different cultures, thinking that we wouldn't have that bonding experience. Um, but again, she relates it to how Muay Thai was really foundational in that practice. 
Um, participant 9 makes that point about having, coming from a vulnerable spot, um, being people being in a vulnerable place, um, because, again, Muay Thai is that very physically demanding practice. You're mentally and physically drained, um, but that sort of that shared exper embodied experience brings us together. Um, and so lastly, participant one again talks about um, way to helping us connect and creating that sense of belongingness um, that really speak to that community um, building power of, of martial arts and Muay Thai specifically that she speaks of there. And so lastly, um, in conclusion, I'd like to finish off with some final reflections on implications of self-determination in martial arts pedagogy and practice um, for gender dynamics as well as for martial arts. <laughs> thinking more broadly across um, our, our study and our, our conference and um, the field. So I would suggest that having self-determination is foundational, the foundational element of pedagogical approaches can support uh, making learning more meaningful, improve motivation and engagement for persons coming from different backgrounds, different gender identities, and those who may be intimidated by martial arts with reducing barriers to coming into these spaces. Based on my research, self-determination is individually and collectively developed. And this has implications for women understanding and what they achieve through the embodied learning of Muay Thai, both individual and at collective levels. There is an incredible community building power achievable through martial arts, as I have found through my experience through this project, I'm sure many of us have experienced in our own contexts. And for myself, from my perspective, it comes from having those shared goals, again, that heightened emotional embodied learning experience, balanced with that sense of vulnerability. But I'd also like to remind us that pedagogy, training approaches, and learning conditions have a lot to do with this. So as I've mentioned at length, the sense of embodying more confidence was a really important to my participants and helped them engage more in relationship building and sharing, which was significant for reducing social isolation and loneliness for um, community development, which from the participants who were new to the community was really important. Prioritizing self-determination in the learning experience helped create a safe space which supported relationship building and social network formation. For immigrants, this was an opportunity to engage and create social networks, and social networks are critical to transnational learning and living. What I found through this research was that the use of feminist pedagogical approaches in teaching diasporic women Muay Thai, which prioritized self-determination, care, and mentorship, created a supporting learning environment that encouraged participation and was effective in helping novice women learners develop skills and confidence in themselves and in building intercultural community and connections. So going back to the theme of this conference and the theme of this panel, on gender and martial arts, I think we had a really very exciting time in martial arts studies. Um, where research into the intersection of martial arts studies with gender studies is flourishing, but there still is much room and potential growth we've seen from Alex's recommendations of potential directions we can go in. There are many opportunities. And by being open to diverse discussions and perspectives, which of course is encouraged by the interdisciplinary nature of martial arts studies, we can inform and transform our research, teaching, and practice. So thank you all very much for your attention. Look forward to our discussion. And any questions, comments, connections, please do reach out.